Hi, this is Thomas LaFoe from the Instructional Media Center, and in this tutorial we'll be looking at how to create conference poster sessions in Microsoft Publisher. To begin, select the File tab, click New, and select More Blank Page Sizes. From here you can scroll down to the Custom section and click on Create New Page Size. When this dialog appears, you can name this poster session for use in a later project. You can also change the page size. For this tutorial, we will use a poster that is 77 inches wide, press tab, and change your height to 44 inches. The margins, according to your design, can also be changed. Here we will change these to one inch. Once you're done setting your page size, click OK. The size is now saved in the custom section, and over on the right hand side of the screen, you can click Create. In designing poster sessions, it's sometimes helpful to set up some guides in the background to create different columns. This is done by going to Page Design, Guides, and grid and baseline guides. In this tutorial we will change the number of columns to three. We want to change our spacing, which is our gutter spacing, the space between these columns, to the same as our margins, so that we have even spacing all the way around each of these columns. So in this case we have three columns with one inch spacing. Click OK. Additional guides can also be added. Move to the ruler at the top of your screen and click and drag. This will place an additional guide here at the top of our poster. Once I've set this area for my title, I can go to Insert and Draw Text Box. Move to the top left of your page, click and drag to insert that text box. Once you've added the text box, you'll notice that the text box tools now show at the top. Here you can change your font. I'm going to select Arial. I can also use the alignment to center this both horizontally and vertically. After inserting the title, you can highlight that title and increase the point size using either these Increase and Decrease font buttons or by typing a new point size. Here I can see that the title is split to two lines, so I may come right here before the subtitle and just put a return so that that starts the second line. I can also control the line spacing. I can highlight these lines, go back to my Home tab where I have my paragraph settings, and then I can set this to single line spacing with no paragraph spacing after each paragraph. I can bold my font, and at the end of this title, I'm going to press Return. You'll notice that the handles around this box turn red. This means that I'm outside of the text box. There are a couple of solutions to this problem. If I make the text box larger by clicking and dragging, I can type in my name and also my affiliation. Highlighting just these two lines, well, let me change the point size for those lines. and then I can shrink my text box to match the guide that I set earlier. You can see in this case I still have the problem of the text running outside of this box. If I were to only select what I see here, the font that I would change would not include my affiliation line. To select everything in this box, go to your Home tab, look toward the right side toward the Editing group, click Select, and then select all text in text box. This can also be done by using Control A on your keyboard. Now when I resize this text, it will size what I see and also what's hanging outside of this box. Click on the edge of your text box. This now allows me to use the drawing tools at the top to change the shape fill and also the shape outline. In this case, I'm going to tell it no outline. 
The colors that you see here are set by the color scheme that you may or may not have chosen at the beginning of this tutorial. If you do not see the color that you wish to use, you can select more fill colors. In this case, you have a spectrum of colors that you can choose from, selecting your hue and also your tint, or you can use the Pantone colors. In this case, for the MSU maroon color, Pantone 202, I can type Pantone 202 and click Find. When I click OK, now that fill color has changed to my custom color. Here I can also highlight the text, go back to my Home tab, and change the color of my font to white. If you want to add backgrounds to each of these columns, this can be done by using shapes. The first step is I want to ensure that I have the same spacing between my title and my columns. I'm going to move to the ruler and drag a guide that's one inch down from the guide I placed earlier. Now I can move to Shapes, select a rectangle, and fill in this first column. By default, the shape comes in with no fill and a black outline. I can change the fill. Here I'm going to use just a light gray. And I'm going to change my outline to no outline. To duplicate this box, you can right click, select copy, and then right click and paste. I can move the shape into place, come to my third column, and also right click and paste. For the middle column, to add some variation, I'm going to select that rectangle, go to my drawing tools at the top, and change my shape fill. You will notice that in the recent colors, I also have the option to use my Pantone color that I created earlier. To insert my text for the abstract, I will move to the Insert tab, select Draw Text Box, and draw a text box at the top of the first column. When working with text on a large document such as this, you may want to zoom in on this text box. To do so, you can use the zoom slider in the bottom right corner. I'm going to change the point size. Again, I'm just going to select 72. And I'm going to paste my abstract into this box. Here you can see that 72 is again too large. To select all of this text, I'm going to click in the text box and press Control A on my keyboard. This not only selects the text that I can see, but also the text that's laying outside of this box. Here I can adjust my point size. You'll notice that the increase and decrease point sizes go by the increments that are defined by this drop-down box. Another shortcut that can be very helpful in working with text is by pressing Control and using your bracket keys. The right bracket will increase the font size, and the left bracket will decrease the font size. With the text highlighted, you can move to your Home tab, change the font color. Here I'm going to use the same maroon color. I can also highlight the word abstract, center this, and increase that point size as well. In this case, increasing that point size makes the text fall outside of this box, so I'm just going to adjust the height. If you would like to include a dividing line, you can also, from the Home tab, select Shapes and the Line tool. Here, if I hold Shift on the keyboard and draw a line, it will keep it straight. I can draw it from one end of the text box to the other, and it places just a thin black line. The line is selected and I can choose the shape outline color. Again, I'm going to use maroon. I can also, from this shape outline, select a different weight. Here I'm going to choose a six-point line. In many cases, hyphenation can make a paragraph very difficult to read on a large format poster. To remove hyphenation, click inside the text box, move to your text box tools at the top, and select hyphenation. Here I can uncheck automatically hyphenate and click OK. And this will remove hyphenation for this text box. Remember that you can also highlight this paragraph, move back to the Home tab, and change your line spacing if you wish. To insert an image, 
move to the Insert tab and select Picture. Browse to the folder that contains your image, select it, and click Insert. The picture comes in at full size. If you need it a specific size, you can use the sizing options here in the Picture Tools, or you can use the side handles or the corner handles. Using the corner handles will keep the picture in proportion. You can use the rotate handle at the top to rotate this picture to a different angle. To add a border around this picture, use the picture border options. This applies a one point stroke around this image, or you can adjust this in the line weight. If you need to crop an image, there are also picture tools available for this. Move to the Crop option here in your Picture Tools and drag the black handles to crop this image. When you are finished, you can click Crop again and then you can reposition your picture. On my third column, I have placed some text that is obviously far too small. A very helpful tool available in Publisher is the Format Painter tool. In this case, I can click on some text that is already formatted, select my Home tab, and then click on the Format Painter. Moving back to my third column, I can highlight my text that I've pasted, and it will automatically format that text to match my selected text. While I have it selected, I can adjust the line options, and I can use this as well for my titles. Selecting the word Abstract, clicking on the Format Painter, and highlighting my titles will make those match as well and click the Format Painter again, and continue this step for each of these titles. Images added in Publisher automatically have a text wrap applied. Here I'm going to insert another image, and move this into place. You will notice that the text wraps around this image. This can be controlled using the Wrap Text option in your Picture Tools. Using these tools, the margins, guides, text boxes, shapes, and images, you can present your research any way you like. If you have any questions, please visit our website at library.msstate.edu slash imc.